There was once a young queen named Anita. She had almost everything you can imagine. Everything except children. You do not know what it is to have so empty a heart as mine, she told her wise advisor, the Countess Renosa. I will fill your heart, replied Renosa with a vengeance. Renosa returned with a charming little baby, willingly giving up by the dying mother. The Princess Novella, she announced. The Queen so loved Novella that she surprised herself one day by saying, One princess is next to no princess at all. One more, at least, will be necessary to complete my happiness. Before long, twelve little feet paddled around the palace. Six princesses, Novella, Mosella, Rema, Papira, Moina, and Delicus. On the night of the christening, the queen's subjects came from far and near, bearing lavish gifts. Everyone except Countess Renosa. Renosa's gifts, wisely chosen, came later. For Novella, a pen. For Mozella, an old piano. For Rayma, a box of paint. For Pepita, a stack of old sheet music. For Moina, a seamstress kit. For Delicus, she gave only a kiss to compliment her grace. Each of the girls soon began to excel in the use of their gifts. Geniuses, they were called. One evening, several years later, as Moina began to work on a beautiful robe, she was startled as a tiny little green fairy popped out of her symbol. What a shame! You have to work so hard with needle and thread, while your sisters enjoy the best of everything, she said. Moina had never fought like this before. She loved her talent. And she loved her sisters. But envy now began to go in her heart. In the same way, envy, for that was that ugly fairy's ugly name, spoke to each of the girls. So powerful was so work that the royal family would have been forever splintered if the wise Renosa had not intervened. Use your gift. Humble thought be, she said, one day you will need it, and so will others. Third day came soon enough, though each warned by premonition not to leave. The king and queen departed without their children for hunt. They never returned. Thinking they will live forever, the king and queen had made no provision. For the adopted children, the poor girls had no palace, no inheritance, and no titles. But they did have each other, and they did have their gifts. And with these, they made a simple home, glad with perpetual sunshine. The end. This story is adapted by William Bookstein. From Elizabeth Princess's Six Little Princesses and what they turned into.